Here are 10 lies the narcissist wants you to believe. Hi, I'm Lynette. Welcome back to Narcissism Exposed. The first lie is the narcissist wants you to believe that they're totally in control of their lives when in reality they are screaming on the inside and the only way they feel that like they're in control in their sick and twisted mind, right? is when they are controlling you. When they're manipulating you and controlling your emotions, that's when they feel in control. And you know what? The greatest accomplishment any of us can have is when we are in control of our own minds, when we have self-awareness, where we have self-reflection and self-regulation, which is something the narcissist will never have. You know, it's easy to cheat to shame someone, blame someone, to lie to someone, to bully someone, to be rude to somebody, that doesn't take much effort at all. So for the for the narcissist to think that he or she's in control is a complete delusion to themselves. The second lie that the narcissist wants you to believe is that he or she is totally self-sufficient and they come across with such arrogance and haughtiness like they have it all together when in fact, without you knowing, they're sleeping on a buddy's couch or they're filing bankruptcy or they have about three to five other people that they're trying to use for supply to swindle some money from them. They don't want you to know any of that. And the thing about being self-sufficient is you have to have self-awareness. You have to be able to govern yourself, discipline yourself, and be aware of yourself. Without any of these things, there is no self-sufficiency. The third lie is that the narcissist thinks he or she is superior. They come across with this kind of high-minded persona and it's all fake, it's all fabricated, it's part of their false narrative to make you believe that they're on top of the world, that they have everything together, when inside of their head, they're actually looking down on you as some type of inferior person. So they're trying to come across like they're all together and that they're in the superior position. And you know, the character of these narcissists it's like they're pieces of all the different supplies that they've had throughout their life. You can't even you can't even determine what their true character is because whatever it is they show you while you're in the victim stage with them, there'll be something completely different to the next supply. The fourth lie is that it's your job to fan their ego. Yeah, that's right. You have to provide praise you have to provide glory. You have to make sure that you're giving them all kinds of adulation because if you don't, you know what's going to happen. They're going to give you hell. The fifth lie the narcissist wants you to believe is that if anything goes wrong, it's going to always be your fault. Why? Because the narcissist is always right in his or her sick, twisted mind. So of course they're going to do blame shifting. They're going to be pointing out things you did in the past. They're going to say things like, well, you know, I wouldn't have done that if you didn't do this. So you see where I'm going with that. The sixth lie is that the narcissist says he or she can orchestrate any outcome. They can make anything happen at the snap of their fingers, anything they set their mind to. But what they're leaving out is that they do it by lies, controlling, manipulation, scheming, conniving. That's right. The seventh lie is that the narcissist tells you you're nothing without him or her. Ha! Huh? Basically, your success has nothing to do with you. The narcissist helped you get successful and the narcissist's success is all about him or her. So basically, you didn't get there by your own merits. The narcissist did it. Hmm. And what they'll do is they'll steal your bang, they'll hog your glory, they'll take your praise, and they'll lie, lie, lie about their part in your success, if any. The eighth lie from the narcissist is that he or she will say, well, you have no power. Well, you did before you met them. 
But since they've tried to take your power away by breaking down your boundaries, they're going to say things real, very belittling to you like, oh, you're just too stupid to that. Oh, you know how forgetful you are. Or I have to be smart for the both of us. Or can't you even think for one second? And they'll use this line. How did you ever get by without me? Hmm. The ninth lie is the narcissist will say, you owe me. Well, let's say they do you this tiny little favor, right? And they're going to go on and on about it. They're going to tell everybody, well, you know, I don't want to brag, but I did this for her or I did that for him. And then you're going to owe this narcissist a hundred X because they did one little thing for you. And they're going to remind you every minute that they can. And the 10th lie is that your opinion and your feelings just don't matter. And they'll say things like, well, you know, you didn't go to school for that. Or stop guessing. You look like an idiot. Or you don't know anything about that. Or they'll say, you always overreact. And they'll even say, oh, you're over-dramatizing. Get a hold of yourself. And where does all of this come from? Because narcissists are basically weak cowards. They're bullies. That's what they are. They are constantly listening to demonic voices. They are devilishly influenced. And you're not dealing with the flesh and blood matter. It is a spiritual warfare. You must understand this because it does not make sense to your mind because you're not seeing it for what it really is. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And there's a great verse in John chapter 10, verse 10. It says, The thief, and the thief is speaking of the devil, comes not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. The rest of the verse says, But I am come, speaking of Jesus Christ, that you may have life and have it more abundantly. You see the stark difference there? And so you see that that influence that the narcissist lives by is coming through those demonic voices that they hear. There's a great account in Jeremiah chapter 48, verses 29 and 30, and it says, We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud of his haughtiness his pride, his arrogance, and his self-exaltation. Sound like anybody you know? Goes on to say, I know his fury declares the Lord, but it is futile. His idle boasts have accomplished nothing. And that's the narcissist. He or she with their idle boasts, their haughtiness, and their pride, they accomplish nothing. And I know some of you may say, but Nanette, I see them on social media. They're always going on vacation. They stole my house. They stole my car. They stole my bank account. Those are unfruitful works. Those are temporary things that, that are here today, gone tomorrow. That is not what God's talking about. These narcissists live futile lives here and now and thereafter when when the vengeance of the lord occurs you must understand the narcissist as much as they try to manipulate and control their victims they are actually pawns for the devil want more proof that the narcissist is living under demonic influences willingly in first john chapter 3 verse 8 it says the one who practices sin is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the very start. This is why the Son of God was revealed, to destroy the works of the devil. And if any of you are wondering, are you born again? Or you would like to get born again so you can be a child of the Most High God. Go to Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 and it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's right. And that is how simple it is to get born again is to confess the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you know, and as a child of God, God does not want you to be around the lies of the narcissist and the darkness of the narcissist. Want proof? And in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness or lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? Absolutely none. So don't believe the lies and don't defend yourself with the narcissist who's only going to be spewing more lies to you. Go to God's word, hold God's word in your heart and your mind and believe what God says about you and what he's accomplished for you by way of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So know that I love you and pray for you daily and leave your comments down below. And if you found this helpful, do hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, do hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I put out a video. And until next time, walk in peace and be blessed in your hearts.